is using her painful experience through an abusive relationship in hopes of saving others. Thanks for joining us at 530, everybody. I'm Yolanda Harris. And I'm Tracy Townsend. 10 TV's Stephanie Stanovich has the details, and we have to warn you, they might be graphic for some. There is this whole scar right through here. A constant reminder to Valerie Cornette of a horrific experience she lived through. No, he never hit me before. But she says one day in April, that changed. And that day he was acting very furtive and just different, like he was on edge. She says her ex-boyfriend, John Cheney, who is now facing charges of assault and kidnapping, attacked her. She threatened to call the police. And then pulled a gun on me and told me that he would shut me up. And, um... As I was trying to retrieve my phone is when he turned around and busted me in the face. I don't know how many times. I know for sure two at least. Cornette says her son was in the room and Cheney's two kids. When you're in a situation like that, you're first, you're in survival mode. Cornette didn't go to the hospital until 12 hours later. She told them she fell but had a feeling they didn't believe her. And that's when they found the skull fractures and the fractures in my face and the concussion and a back contusion. A week went by. On the 13th, he dropped off her son at daycare. He took his kids. That's when she says police were called. It was like, he's running. Cornette shared her story on social media in hopes of helping others. You can reach out to me. You can tell me, ask me about my essential oil products and uh, that tells me that you're in a DV situation or you're worried about it and I'll keep checking on you. If they're in danger, I'll do whatever I can for them or create a, mo a woman's group where we can just watch out for one another at the end of the day because it's not just our lives, it's our kids' lives. Reporting in Columbus, Stephanie Stanovich, 10 TV News. Police arrested Cheney in May in Kentucky. This week, Cheney's bond was set at a quarter million dollars. Well, we wanted to get some more perspective on this, so we spoke with experts at Nationwide Children's Hospital. We also spoke with the Lutheran Social Services program called Choices. They offer shelter and provide resources for adults in situations like these. Experts say isolation is a concern because most abuse happens at home. Another concern? Victims worry about catching the virus at a shelter, but these organizations stress shelters are taking safety precautions. As for warning signs, here's what to look out for. An abuser might be controlling or put the victim down. The abuser's temper might drastically change and the victim might distance himself or herself from others. Leaving an abusive relationship is a very dangerous time, so we plan that very carefully with victims of domestic violence so that we can help them get to safety. Just really knowing that um, that you're not alone and that help is available and and also that for every person who is a survivor, you're making decisions constantly about ways to keep yourself and your family safe. We recognize that you're making like calculated and protective decisions. Now, if you or someone you know needs help, go to thehotline.org. Also, Franklin County's LSS Choices Crisis Hotline is answered 24 hours a day, and the number to that is 614-224-4663.